take a new look at old games. They called it Cheap Seats with Ron Parker. Parker, an anchor with attitude, was helped thanklessly by tape librarians Randy and Jason. The show was slated to go all the way. But moments into the first show, tragedy struck. With Ron on the DL, somebody needed to step up. Like Gehrig for Pip or Brady for Bledsoe. Sitting two and three on the hosting depth chart, that someone was Randy and Jason. That is their story. And this is Cheap Seats without Ron Parker. Hi, I'm Jason, this is Randy, and welcome to Cheap Seats, where we take a new look at the old games. Or a first look, as in the case of today's event. Now, back in the 90s, ESPN aired a breathtaking new sport. That's right, they took the searing drama of the Olympic Games and all the honor and prestige that accompanies them, and then added dogs. The result, super dogs, super jocks. Now, by the laws of the label super, these dogs should all have one fatal weakness. For Superman, it was kryptonite. For the Supersonics, it was Vin Baker. For the Super Freak, it was crack cocaine. And for these super dogs, it may just be their super jock counterparts. Now, here's what we want you to look for. Here's what to look for. Here's what to look for. Now you're going to want to pay special attention during this broadcast to the obscene number of dog puns that the announcers make throughout. It's so offensive that we've decided to keep a running tally of all the bad dog puns, and we'll show this graphic every time we hear one. So without further ado, please allow us to present some of the greatest athletes of their species. And a few once great Olympians as well. It's time for Super Dogs, Super Jacks on Cheap Seats! Great athletes known as Super Jocks come in all varieties. Okay, who calls great athletes Super Jocks? Super dorks. The amazing power and grace is he on a Stairmaster? Why is he so mad? He said, you cannot bring that camera onto my lawn. Mm -mm. Or the daring agility and Me? A Super Jock? Olympic gold medal downhiller, Bill Johnson. But great athletic ability. Okay, he's holding a ball in his mouth. How is that great athletic ability? Incredible canine competitors who've thrilled millions with their athletic ability. Millions? Really? For the first time, these Ow! competitors. You want the frisbee? You want the frisbee? You can't handle the frisbee! Come back with my Dunlop, you. ESPN presents. Okay, wait a minute. Rewind. What did that dog just say? Alright, freeze it right there. Ah, look at that logo. It's so violent. Who is it modeled after? Bob Probert? It does look like the guy wants to just punch the dog. Hello everybody, I'm Barry Tompkins along with Willie Galt. Ah yes, Willie Galt. African Was Ronaldo Skeets Nehemiah not available? California, and we're going to be seeing some great athletes today. Athletes of the two-legged and the four-legged variety. And you know, Willie, what strikes me is there's a derogatory term that we sometimes use in regards to athletes saying they got a little dog in them. Well, today that's one. <laughs> Absolutely, that's a compliment. Now, the three athletes that are here today... My soul is dying. Golden in common. They each have Do you think they're getting my Super Bowl ring in the shot? ...that will be their partners. Uh, if they were competing in the Olympics, maybe they would win gold medals too because they're wonderful. But and dogs will never compete in the Olympics we because they're the dogs. Word. And communication between the athlete and the dog is very important. Where are they? Marine World Scotland? If the athlete doesn't communicate with the dog, then they lose points because the dog won't do what the athlete wanted him to do. So it's going to be very interesting, very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Really? But first, let's meet our super dog, super jock teams. I thought we just met him. How many times do you have to introduce him? Captain's the blue team. He may be the best overall human athlete here. I know, yeah. He does train dogs as a hobby. Who names their dog Demolition Derby? It's a dog, not a battle bot. Derby. Trust me, folks. The name does fit. Koki has been on ESPN in competitions before. And he's a puppet. Healer is also an excellent jumping dog. Then there's Poacher. I could use a cliche here. Please folks. don't. This dog came to play, but he really did. Oh, you did. Ah. Billy Johnson captains the black team. Bill predicted a gold medal in 84, and he could do it here with Hicks on his team. This dog literally carries... Boy, there really is too much specialization in super dog competitions these days. Remember when each dog had to go out and do every event, not relying on other dogs to clean up his mess? Yeah, you just don't see as many dogs out there giving you the complete games anymore. Ball champion. Finally, Steve Lundquist's red team may score some early... More like Funquist. Steve has a way with ladies, and he has three female... Dogs. Steve likes the bitches. The Duchess here is a Borzoi that can jump as well as, well, as well as Mike Conley. 
Sky here will show her talents later. Yeah, show us your talents. Show them. If you've seen the movie The Ref, you've seen this one, Mud Puddles in action. She took a bite out of crime. Hey, it's Gene Simmons' dog. Oh? Now, Mud Puddles will get a chance to make some puddles in our first event, Sink or Swim. It starts with a Bob Ross painting. These lanes to the shore. That's where the dog teammates will be waiting for the athletes. The jock has to get his dog into these kayaks and get out into the water again. So, once you're in the boat, the trick is... Wait, what's Al Franken doing in that boat? Buoy's right here. Well, at least he's keeping it balanced. You gotta make sure your canine... And fair. ...stays in the boat with you. Yeah, that's a tough part. Yeah, now after the buoy course is beat, it's back to shore once again and off to these dogs. Balls. Colored for each team and filled with tennis balls. The jock grabs a ball and throws Throw. this set of buoys. Now the dog has to swim out, get retrieve. Retrieve it. Barry, that's how sink or swim works. Has I been. Steve Lundquist that is in fact swim, and for Mike Conley, I'm not so sure. Could be sink. It's a setup. What is? Let's say, well, this is not Mike <laughs> Connolly's favorite before. event. Well, Barry, before. I would guess his favorite event is the triple jump, seeing how he's a gold medalist and all. On this one. <laughs> Here are their partners. Uh, Mud Puddles is the partner of Steve Lundquist. That's Brenton in the middle, the German Shepherd. He's Bill Johnson's partner. And Poacher, the golden retriever, is the... Sink or swim. It's just like Double Dare, only less athletic. Six. Connolly showing off his gold medal jumping ability there. Connolly, he just kind of wants to stay in the hunt. Get from point A to point B. I'm surprised he didn't jump further there. He could have probably jumped. Okay, where the hell is Bill Johnson going? How did he get into the other lane? He's out of bounds! That's not the lane with the Bob Ross arrow. Well, at least this event isn't biased in favor of Lundquist, an Olympic swimmer. That's okay. I'm sure it balances itself out. The next events will no doubt be skiing and triple jumps based. Mike is just glad to have this wetsuit on, keep him sinking. <laughs> Steve Lundquist, on the other hand, started to stand up and realized it was too deep. Mud puddle saying, what are you doing, partner? No, she didn't, Barry. She's a dog. And Lundquist is out of the water. Now he's got to get mud puddles into the boat. This is where they have to work together. Ow, 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 my neck, Steve, my neck. Oh, God. Please don't let him drown. We don't have insurance. Well, he's there to float, and that's all he wants to do. And meanwhile, Bill Johnson getting out of the water, panting a little bit. Steve Lundquist and Mud Puddles underway. Baby got back, and lots of it. It's a long way, and they're out of gas. The action's just starting to heat up here on Cheap Seats. And before we go to break, if I may, I'd like to take a moment and convey a personal message that's really important to me. Please, go ahead, Jay. Thanks, Rand. Now, we don't often use this show as a social platform, but it seems so appropriate given the subject matter of this particular show. Folks, if you have a Bob Barker at home, please remember to get him spayed and neutered. Yeah, let's try and keep the Bob Barker population down, people. It's better for him, it's better for us, and dagnabbit, it's better for the Samoans. We'll be back with the winner of the Showcase Showdown here on Cheap Seats right after this. Welcome back to Cheap Seats. Okay, we're going to have to see that cheap shot again and break it down a little bit. Let's take a look at that crucial moment. As you can see, Bush isn't even looking at Barney as he attempts to grab him. This isn't your foreign policy, George. you got to keep your eye on the ball. And watch the reaction of the poor girl here. She's absolutely terrified. It's like she just saw Santa punch Rudolph in the nose. And then poor Barney. At first he's stunned. Then he realizes his chance to get away, but then he fails, and it's another four years in Bush's doghouse. And speaking of dogs trying to run away, let's see how Poacher and Mike Conley are doing. And meanwhile, Steve Lundquist thinking about the 100 points for first place in this... You can't blame the German Shepherd. He was only following orders. Second place, and the third place finisher, who I'll just bet will be Mike Conley. Are you allowed to bet on this thing? I don't know. Let's ask Rick Neuheisel. Wants to take a swim here. And Bill Johnson got him settled down very quickly. Remember, we said teamwork is really the name of the game here. And here's Steve Lundquist and Mud Puddles just seems to be enjoying the run. Okay, who designed this course? Jackson the Pollock? Still has some work to do once they get to shore. So Lundquist is going to be the first, as expected, to reach the finish line. But remember, there's still the toss and the retrieval. 
So now Mud Puddle's out of the ball. Ow, 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 ow. Her partner, Steve Lundquist. Ow, ow. He will reach for the ball. Ow, ow. Now I have to get Mud Puddle's attention here. She's not the most formful swimmer. Well, less than All right, rewind it. And She's the Mike Conley of dogs. Bottom heavy. Brenton's saying, I can do that better. Just get it. Here the dogs really get to display their super athleticism by sitting in a boat and doing nothing. Is there for Lundquist and Mud Puddles to win. Now Mud Puddles, she's going after the buoy. Yeah, maybe you should yank her around a little bit more, huh, Lundquist? That'll motivate her. New ball. Or he could just cheat and throw another new ball. And advancing steadily, if not prettily. Uh, that's not a wordily. Uh... Actually, ran it is. Whoa, whoa, you can't smack the dog with an oar. Yeah, don't blame him because you're swimming. Johnson and Breton now. What is going on here? Breton is telling Bill, you go fetch it. <laughs> Again, Willie, dogs can't talk. <laughs> He's after it now, but Steve Lundquist. Ow, ow. This one, and there he is. Steve Lundquist ow. is the first. All right, freeze it right there. Now, why not just curtain off those empty seats? Carrier dome style. Um, let's get there. Steve Lundquist is the winner of this event. All right, settle down, lady. It's not the NBA Finals. Is this crowd even in the same place as this event? Are they even in the same season as this event? Yeah, it's like late fall in the stands. Bill Johnson fetched that pretty well. Oh, what an exciting way to start here today. I mean, you had everything in this first week. Everything. Yeah, except any drama or understanding of what's going on or athleticism or rivalry or sportsmanship or dignity. Where is Mike? <laughs> I know he didn't drown. That I know for a fact. He's in the boat and at least he's There's dry. Mike. There's Mike. And Poacher's saying, do I ever get to fetch you? <laughs> no, she's not. Barry, she's a dog. Dogs don't talk. Steve Lundquist, who was the winner of the first event. That's two exclamation points too many. Mike Conley, just glad that it's over. He has 25. And right now... Hey, it's the Loch Ness Boombox. With the winners. Or Yao Ming Shower Radio. Well, Steve, I think we kind of played into your hands in the first event. Uh, anything particularly tough about the swimming part of this for you? Uh, actually watching Bill go sideways instead of forward. That, that was kind of tough for me. And then I came over here, and it wasn't quite as shallow as I thought it was. But well, you got the commanding early lead here. Back to you guys. You know, it's been all fun and games, to tell you the truth, here at Marine World Africa USA. And that was the case for... And there's Mrs. Lundquist, also a swimmer. Of the aquatic variety. This is Yaka. Much to the joy of the Olympic gold medalist in Jump, swimming. honey, jump. Awful lot of time That's the water, my girl. But very little of it with somebody like this. How much did Yaka Come like? Come here, you. I love you. A little kiss from the whale. And if a killer whale... How come Lundquist gets to have all the fun? What about Conley and that other guy, the skiing dude? This no small animal. Like Got along very well with Steve Lundquist. Getting a little cream from his trainer while the creme de la creme of the aquatic world, Steve Lundquist, got a chance to try out the water skiing lagoon. All right, freeze it. Can we please, as a human race, stop putting animals in non-animal situations? I'm pretty sure that tiger does not want to watch you wakeboard. Yeah, haven't we learned anything from Siegfried and Roy? Of course, brought along. Is what? Super dogs and super jocks. The theme song is like 80s synth mixed with the dog barking. I love it. Now, you may have noticed the rather sparse crowd on hand at this event, and you may have asked yourself, now, how in the world can Superdog Superjocks not be a sellout? Well, we'll be honest, folks. It has nothing to do with the fact that it was overcast and cold that day, or the fact that it's grown men and dogs competing against each other in various absurd obstacle courses. No. It has everything to do with the fact that one mile away, on this very same day, MTV held its own event called Snooper Dogs, Snooper Jocks, which was basically the same event as this one with Snoop Dogg and everyone else. Yeah, everyone was. We'll be back with more cheap seats right after this. Even the dogs. They were hot too. Welcome back. Okay, if you're like us and you're watching Super Dog Super Jocks, one burning question constantly comes to mind. Who wrote that fantastic theme song? Exactly. And through the power of television, a top-notch research department, and a 2.6 second Google search, we have somehow managed to track down said composer. He is with us in the studio today. Would you please give a warm, cheap seats welcome to Robbie Hancock. Thank you, Robbie, for coming down here. I realize you're probably very busy. Well, actually, no. Um, I haven't worked in two and a half years. It's been hard. I, I cry a lot, which helps. Well, great. 
Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. When we heard your name was Hancock and we thought about the music that you put in the show, we were sort of both reminded of jazz great Herbie Hancock. Was that a coincidence? or uh, No. Growing up, his music was playing in my house all the time. So your parents were big fans of Herbie Hancock? Well, no, my dad is Herbie Hancock. Oh, so your grandparents were such big fans of the jazz legend that they named their son... The no, no, my father is jazz legend Herbie Hancock. Oh, come on. I mean, you're... I, I'm what? A great piano player? No. Uh, yes. I mean, just your. Uh, I see where. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. I see where you're going with this. Um, <clears throat> I get this all the time, really. My my dad is black, but my mom is now bino, so they just kind of cancel each other out. You know, I look like this. My brother looks like Trajan Langdon. So, super dogs, super jocks. Come on, that must have been huge for you. It was enormous. Um, well, you know, everybody has to have a niche in this business, right? And my niche is the strategic placement of dog barks within existing TV sports themes. So, obviously, this was big. This You've had a lot of success with it, is what you're saying. Well, it depends how you define success. Am I making enough money to pay my rent? No. Am I, though, currently involved in a lengthy email discussion with one of the Baja men about possible places to insert dog barks in the remix of Who Let the Dogs Out? Yes. So... It's really a double-edged sword. Uh, so what are you working on right now? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Actually, I am currently working on some demos for ESPN. Oh, so ESPN hired you again to do another theme song. That's great. Well, no, actually, we're, we're still in the pitch phase. But can I, can I play you a little bit of it? Sure. Totally. Ready? It's going to do the dark. Yeah. Dark. That's great. Oh, okay, I, yeah, no, that's great. Oh, no, wonderful. Tell, hey, leave us a CD. Yeah, yeah, I was planning out. on doing that. Um, what I'll need from you guys is a blank CD and um, a CD burner. We don't have either of those no. here. Oh, okay. Hey, I noticed uh, an office on my way in with a couch in it, and I was thinking, you guys don't work overnight, right? So would it be cool if I could just crash there for a day or a week? Probably not, but go for it. Yeah. Robbie Hancock, everybody. Robbie Hancock. Robbie Hancock, folks. Rocking it out. Making us sad. Let's get back to the action. Out of the water and into the air. Lots of things that go jump in the night here. The Dolphins. And, of course, he's coming right out. Oh! Tiger! But we got some flying hounds. What's it going to look like now? Well, Poacher, our dog cam operator, is going to give you a dog's eye view of this competition. Yeah. Poacher appears to have some tracking problems. And over. Uh, I hope he's not about to lick his own ass. Five points. And they're the sole survivors of yesterday's competition. Lundquist super ducks, super chefs. Heading into the second round. Conley trails uh, Lundquist by 50 by virtue of the fact... Mike Conley's dog looks like he's homeless. Missed at 10 bars. What about this round? Demolition Derby here, of course, as you know, reminiscent of uh, Tramp from My Three Sons. This How about an older reference, what Bob? What, what kind of prediction for this dog? Well, Demolition Dog, he's my, he's, I like him. He's Wait, isn't his right name now. Demolition right, Derby? Right, no, 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 he's your dog. I'm not even in the competition, I know his name. Like a person in a dog suit. Yeah. Eight. Good what? Luck. Potential Eight. 40 points. Go get him. Sarlat with the announcer will whiff. Let's go, Demo! Dog looks good. Yeah, did you just come back from summer tour with the dead? rugged, he takes it all. And now, Galt reclaims the lead as the world's shakiest announcer. As much as he goes over them, but this time, he's right on it! Perfect! Demolition Derby! Freeze it. All right, now, if the dog tries to block a field goal from there, that's going to be a penalty. That was a great jump. He just floated through the air. Hang on to it. And the crowd just loves this. Rooting for the underdog. Ready, Brent? Uh, there's another one. Ready? Yes, he's ready. That's why he's choking himself to get going. Into first place. Here comes Breton. Easy. Over. Oh, yeah. Yes. No problem. Yes. He sprints back down. He wants to do it again right away. Look. He's that pumped up. So pumped Is Breton on roids? Yeah, but it's like a whole to-do. You got to mash him up and put him in peanut butter. And then Vince Conti has to come over and massage his throat till it goes down. It's a whole... Thing. I've ever seen in my life. We're going for 13 coming up. Ready? <laughs> that would be well, well, take a look at Breton's last jump, and boy, form for That's not fair. He's bionic. Steve Lundquist now 
And the people who were too cheap to pay the admission for Marine World are going wild. You don't need much uh, intimidation here. The chicken for mud puddles, but what for what for Dutch is here? I'll tell you what, I think the higher the bar gets, the better she jumps. So we're going to go all the way with this one and have some fun. Is it me or does this competition seem a little tilted towards Lundquist? They're doing pieces about him. He's hanging out on boats with tigers. The first event was swimming. He's allowed to choke the dogs whenever he wants. I smell a rat terrier. That's as high as they will allow in this competition. She does can't By do they, do you mean the International that, Super Dog Super Jocks Governing Senate or Willie Gall? We'll finish second. All right, all the way. By the long face. Yeah. Oh, she does. She does Come it so on, much. So much. It's just a matter of fact, over. of course. Over, over. Here she comes. Over. She's kind of like Andrew Jones, so nonchalant, but then always makes the play. And she's never won a World Series. 13! Girl can jump! Okay, Randy and I are such big fans of High Flying Hounds that we've created our own little competition. We call it High Flying Production Assistance. Randy, why don't you introduce us to your PA? Well, his name is Mr. Nibbles, and he is a suburban Caucasian. He's four. Uh, in dog years. Well, he's beautiful. His coat is fantastic. I can see that you've gotten him neutered. That was a good call because yeah. he is so well behaved. He really is. Uh, we had some problems when he was two. We had to do a little crate work, but uh, he's past that and he's really excited to jump, aren't you, Mr. Nibbles? Who's your good boy? Who's your good boy? You want to live? Who's your? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. After the jump. Good boy. Okay, why don't you tell us what you're going to be jumping today? Well, he's going to be jumping over the entire first season of Beg, Borrow, and Deal. Yikes. The raw footage. <laughs> so. That stack is really high. Well, so is Mr. Nibbles. So, okay. you ready? Come on, Mr. Nibbles. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, Mr. Nibbles. Come on, buddy. You ready? Come on, let's do this, Mr. Nibbles. Come on, Mr. Nibbles. Okay, Here Mr. Nibbles ready, is Mr. approaching Nibbles. the first stack. Here He's go. done ready? this before. This should be a piece go, of cake for him. Yeah, we need to go. Easily. Come on, jump it, jump it, jump it. Second jump stack, jump it, jump it. Come on, Mr. Nibbles. Yeah, oh, he's over that as well. You got it, buddy. Here's where he's in the thicket. Come on, come on. No one has cleared a stack this time. Oh, my God. Randy, he, he's circling. Get he's him outside. Nervous. I he's know. Nervous. That's why he needs to get outside. He is nervous, Jacob. No, 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 we know a lot of you out there are participating in those Super Dogs Rotisserie Leagues. So as an added bonus, we're going to throw it over to Eric and Brandon at the ESPN Fantasy Desk. Hi there. All right, we've got the Frisbee Toss coming up. And really, this is a great chance to pick up some possession receivers here now. Personally, I like a dog named Duchess. She's bigger than the other dogs, and she's got this nonchalant style. That's going to scare some people away, but her leaping ability, her size, these are things that make her a great pickup. Yeah, absolutely. I just got a word that Hicks has got put on waivers. Now, you're going to want to pick this dog up. He's hungry. If you need to, you can just put him on your bench. You can use him during a bye week. Now, here's something I haven't said too often, but the underrated dog of the week, Mud Puddles. Okay, now, she couldn't clear eight bars, but, guys, she's got a lot of heart. She's been watching tons of tape. She's got a soft schedule from here on in. You know, I say look for this bitch to rack up some serious points. Come on, Eric, what are you high? I mean, if you're even going to say the words underrated dog of the week, you got to follow that with just two words. Demolition dog. He's been working with a trainer. He's put on two pounds of muscle, and he switched from Purina to science diet. This dog is serious about winning. Plus, this is a utility dog. He doesn't specialize in any one event. Just does everything well. He's clutch. He's the kind of dog you go out and you build your fantasy team around. All right, he's Eric. I'm Brandon. This has been the Fantasy Focus. Woof. Thanks for the insight, guys. Now let's get back to Super Dogs, Super Jocks, and the Rapid Relays. Aren't all relays supposed to be rapid? All right, two events are down now. We're finished with the water events. We come now only to the rapid relay. It's a feast or family. They just kind of tack event. on the love boat theme. The winner. Mike Conley figures this is his chance. He doesn't have fins and scales. <laughs> he says, I'm on my turf now. That's right. Now, this is a rapid event. Mike has to negotiate this circle. That's, That's why the they've world. called in Kevin Spacey. Get through this and get back. It'll do very well. Get him back in the race. All right, this is the definitive team event. The definitive all team event? What? What about college basketball or volleyball? Or hockey. And here are the rules. Steve Lundquist will have the first race off as Conley Wait, what? Johnson. Lundquist gets a bye? And he got to meet the Tiger? That's so unfair. What is this? The Steve Lundquist Invitational? That is Kogi. Remember, 100 points to the winner. Losers get nothing. Here we go. That is Hicksus. Hicksus uh, fumbling the ball. Something he doesn't do. This whole thing feels like a four-year-old's birthday party. 
only less fun. Here comes Ruffian. Kind of a tender little take of the ball. Mike Conley's team has taken the lead now. Demolition dirt. Nope. And Breton chases him. Nice Who's that lady? Okay, this just gets more and more demeaning. These are Olympic caliber athletes, people. But look at Bill Johnson. He's getting through that obstacle course very well. Fumbled the ball, but picked it up and fell out in front of him. Opportunistic for him and the dive. Too close to call. But close enough to call humiliating. Great race. And the crowd can barely contain himself. Johnson thinks he did. Mike Connolly thinks he did. I'm not Glad. Sure. Let's take a look. Well, it appears that Mike Connolly has an insurmountable lead, but here he makes a mistake. He Boink. drops the ball, but of course he gets it back right away. He goes through. Now, Mike has a problem with these circles because he's such a big guy, and Bill is used to the tuck position. Who thought up this event? And look, oh, got his hand across, did Connolly. Johnson wants proof. Where's that instant replay? Uh, we just saw it, and you lost. We just saw the instant replay, and Bill Johnson did it. But thank God he's wearing a weight belt. Mike Connolly will now play Steve Lundquist for the 100 points. Sky is ready to go. Let's take a look at Steve Lundquist's all girl. Hey, that's the fountain from Friends. And even it looks bored. Sky is border collie and mud puddles. The swimming rottweiler. Hoping to do well. Okay, wait, rewind it. What are the dogs saying? Hoping to do well in this event also. Kogi will lead it off for Mike Connolly's team. Four, three, two, one, go. No one was more surprised than we were that the crowd could count backwards. Here comes Sky now for Steve Lundquist. I can't believe this was on ESPN. And now it's Coacher underway along with Duchess. Duchess is like, I just jumped seven feet in the air. Now if you want me, I'll be in my trailer sipping water out of the loo. <laughs> and that may be where she's going. Mud puddle starts back, but I think there's going to be too little too late. Look how far ahead Conley oh, is. Look at Steve. <laughs> yeah, the dog has standards, but Steve doesn't. Of course. He's coming back around all the obstacles. And Conley still beat him. He's still beating. Oh, my Cheater. <laughs> Steve says by any means necessary at all means. How did this heat suddenly become a metaphor for race relations in our country? Duchess said you try good. Look at Steve. He wants to annihilate Michael's course. So that Michael Who thought up this event? Charles Edward Cheese the third. He picks up after Steve. <laughs> Thankfully, this male nurse was on hand to help Conley pick up the pieces. Mike Conley is. So Conley gets the 100 points in the rapid relays. I believe he earned it. Yeah, you are the champion. You know, even though it looks like it, they didn't just throw together that obstacle course. That took months of building, years of planning, and a lifetime of dreaming by one man. That man is Guy LaFleur, and this is his story. Yeah, anybody can take a ramp or a high jump bar, too, and slap it down and call that an obstacle course. But uh, to... Give a course a sense of flow, to create obstacles that are pleasing to the eye, as well as bring out the dog's dogness. That takes an architect, and that's what I do. My name is Guy Lafleur. Guy spelled like Guy, and uh, Lafleur is French name, uh, meaning of the floor, a man of the floor. And uh, I am the super dogs, super jocks, course architect. You hear a lot about golf course architects, um, Jack Nicklaus, uh, Arnold Palmer, Terrence Trent Darby, but you don't hear a lot about me. I still remember the moment when it all became clear. There was a miniature golf course where I used to caddy on Saturdays, and uh, on the 17th hole they had a windmill. And when people would tee off on 17, they would look at the windmill and say, how am I gonna hit it through that thing? And I would look at the windmill and say, how can I get a dog to jump over it? I guess I'm kind of like Don Quixote that way. Don Quixote and a dog, right? Drutastic bark. Kids love dinosaurs. I don't have a dog myself. I'm allergic. Um, dogs and cashews. Throat closes right up for both. Um, I guess my biggest nightmare would be uh, if a dog who had eaten some cashews were to uh, throw up in my mouth. Um, and lucky for me, that only happened once. It's a challenge to come up with new dog obstacles, uh, dog obstacles. Um, you know, having never really spent any time with dogs. But you know, that's why I have to work two, 
four, ten times harder than, uh, you know, than the next guy. I'm not a mathematician, okay? I'm an architect. I get my inspiration from deep, deep inside. Literally. I have a rare disease called wandering spleen. I used to get mad at God and say, why can't I have a spleen that stays in one place like other people? But the madder I got, the more my spleen would wander. So I got madder and I got creative. For three years, I charted the path of my spleen around my insides. I diagrammed it. I did a mock-up and boom, two days later, I had my very first Super Dogs, Super Jocks Eliminator course. Some architects try to execute their vision, but they are stopped by obstacles. For me, there are no obstacles, except the obstacles on the course, which aren't technically obstacles in the way I was speaking of them, although they are obstacular in nature. That was really an inspiring story. Yeah, not so much. We'll be back after the break. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. Sears, good life, great price. Welcome back to Cheap Seats. Let's get right back into the action of Super Dog Super Jocks. Yeah, we don't want to miss a sniffing minute. Well, now we come to an event that's as American as apple pie and, well, as baseball used to be. Really? And a dog. This event is more American than baseball these days? I don't know. That's a pretty bold statement. Is it, Jay? I think Tompkins is right. Baseball isn't purely American anymore. It's been infiltrated by a foreign element. We're not talking about your Ichiro's, your Sammy Sosa's, your Pedro Martinez's. Because while they were all born in other countries, those players have come to represent the multicultural melting pot that is America. If anything, they've made the game more American. But there is one player that is polluting the league with his complete lack of Americanness. We're talking, of course, about Larry Walker. Oh, sure, at first, he kept his Canadianness close to the vest, playing for the Expos. But with the passing of NAFTA, he migrated southwards like a Canadian goose, bringing his Canadian brand of baseball to the unsuspecting U.S. town of Denver. How many oots are there? We're up against a tough pitcher today. Can I play my Glass Tiger CD in the clubhouse before the game, A, eh? That's some Maple Leaf bull if you ask me. Larry Walker, we stand on guard for ye. Your attempts to cannibalize and Canadianize our national pastime is the very reason why the obstacle course from Super Dogs Super Jocks has surpassed baseball as America's favorite sport today. Larry Walker, you might win our batting titles, but you'll never win our American hearts. Let's take a look at the rules then. Fourth throws it all. And Please say Lundquist's middle name is Mark. Double the points. The points, of course. So the points of this event get added on to the total? I thought they were part of a totally different show. Texas. Texas, an Australian Shepherd. The Australian Shepherd. Now that's American. That's oh. it. That was a great throw by Bill. Of course, Texas did a great Is this a commercial for Benetton Kids? Up there. Did he get in the hundred? I don't know. Let's take Why a look. Well, look, he catches it. Oh, both, both, all, all four feet in. <laughs> and all you have to do to make... Now, the college dogs only have to get two paws in, but the pro dogs have to get all four in. And a pretty nice catch by him. Nice catch. Sign him up. <laughs> Sign him up with who? Okay, so after Johnson, it was Conley's turn, and he did okay, but we need to cut some stuff for time. And it's much more fun to make fun of Lundquist. It's not from you, I know. Present company accepted. <laughs> Steve Lundquist now, first toss, and Sky runs that one down. That's Who's the guy in the bow tie? That's Duchess's publicist. Oh. Yeah. These dogs really love the competition. Here we go again. Nailed it for 100. Oh, God, that was a great... There's Duchess's publicist schmoozing the crowd. He's trying to get Duchess a 13-episode commitment from the animal planet. Who else does he represent? The Geico Gecko. Nice. And got it for 50 points. Steve Lundquist, big time. I love how the crowd's roped off. Yeah, that's so they can't leave. Yes. Here we go. Yeah, this but does it taste as good as the other one? This is the gold disc, double the points. And by gold disc, you of course mean yellow frisbee. I can't get out of 
Oh, almost nearly, but not Good quite job. hardly, unfortunately. That's a lot of adverbs, Tom Kinley. Almost just doesn't count. Oh, Jackie well, Smith of dogs. Did count, 100 points worth. This one is pitcher perfect form. Look at that. The Great. catch and 100 points. And Steve is with Bob. Well, you know, as a former football player myself, just in college. It wasn't a major college, D3, D4, really. Actually, it was JUCO, not even. It was a league. Well, not a league, just a group of guys that got together. It was flag football. I was 10, 11, maybe. And it wasn't football. It was kickball. I used to go with my dad. Well, I went alone. He dropped me off. My parents were divorced. My mom worked three jobs. I get sad when I see parents hugging their kids, but enough about me. Nice frisbee toss. Ahead of Bill Johnson in the overall competition, he leads Johnson by 80 and Conley by 125. Stay with us. We got lots more Super Dogs, Super Jocks action right after this. That's right. We've only begun to sniff the butt of this thing. Here, let's find out. Just that Steve Lundquist had a recurring role as Igor in the Attack of the Killer Tomato movies. Do you care that Willie Galt has a recurring role as a Secret Service agent on the West Wing? Do you care that announcer Bob Sarlat has a recurring role as an MC at the annual Cal Stanford Big Game Luncheon? Wow. What? I would have never, ever imagined that Superdog Superjacks would be a career highlight for Hey, anyone. easy there, Ran. Right now, it's a career highlight for us. So... Oh, yeah. Hey, you think Willie Gall could get me on the West Wing? Not now. Good point. Let's get back to the action. We welcome you back to Marine World Africa, USA. One of the more demanding... Double trouble, more like double dare. I'll take the physical challenge. Look like cute poacher, heel poacher. Get over here with the dog cam. Here's what it looks like through poacher's eyes. Headed it for the A frame. Ah, uh, nauseous, nauseous. You got that? Is this dog a cameraman for NYPD Blue? Twice. In fact, you can go through each one of these disciplines as many... Karate is a discipline. This is a disaster. Each one of these disciplines, however, has a different point value. Let's take a look at what they are. You saw that A frame. That's the most difficult. You got it's the course after a nuclear holocaust. Yeah, only roaches and Lundquist survived. 20 for some and 10 for the shortest jumps. But remember, the most important thing is the final jump where you can double your total points. As the competitors say, it's rough. Wow, it took 33 minutes for them to make that joke. I had it happening in minute 14. Apparently, I underestimated. And for the A-frame, couldn't get it the first time, now up and over the A-frame. Meanwhile, may I remind you that Barry Tompkins used to call the likes of Hagler Hearns, and now he's doing play-by-play -play for Ruffian. We're watching his running total, 120 now, 140. Is that a horn? Because it sounded like someone just sat on Hicks. Great jump, last jump. Bill set it up, set him up. Uh, Bill, 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 that's not good for the dog, Bill. Yeah, you have to get a good angle on that, John. Rough. Short shorts. 14 inches high. There's Gina, Bill Johnson's wife and his son. Here was the jumping champion, Duchess. Shorter shorts. Lundquist, ready to go. Here goes Duchess. He's dragging the dog. Who the hell is this guy, Ike Turner? Walk over that. That's a 50-pointer. The tortoise and the hare is in here. Get back over that. I'm sure he's great with kids. <laughs> she just doubled up. Yep. She's refusing to finish the race. Who is she, Scotty Pippin's dog? I don't have to do all this other stuff. You have to do it after the whole I said, Steve. I mean, he don't know what to do. I don't like when he pulls my neck. It wouldn't, of course, double, but it would count. Gracias. <laughs> He's begging, he's going to This is how Steve tries to appeal to all the bits. Forget it. I'm not doing it for Zar Nicholas. Yeah, bite it. An Olympic swimmer. But Steve fetches pretty good. He's doing a great job. Aw, what a loser. Eat it, kid. Yeah, eat it. Eat it. Festivities here at Marine World Africa, USA. Watch out for that flying purple graphic! The Johnsons had a chance to meet and greet some of the park's prize inhabitants. After what happened in Las Vegas, I would never, under any circumstances, let my child touch a tiger. Oh, aren't you a pretty ape? You can pet her all over. <laughs> yeah, hungry birds, huh? The only thing more boring than a Johnson family vacation is watching the raw footage. Rounded. Yeah, Bill, let your kid pet that. Better yet, why don't you cut his knee and let him swim with it? Killer goldfish. 
Theirs was a love that was not allowed to flourish. Society said no, but their hearts said yes. Tonight on the hump. Our contestants will leave with just a home game and some handsome party gifts. That's right, folks. The Super Dog Super Jocks home game. You know, as fate would have it, the makers of the Super Dog Super Jocks home game happen to be one of our sponsors. Yeah, let's see what they have to offer. Let's. Everybody loves watching Super Dog Super Jocks, right? No. Well, now you can play it anytime you want. It's the Super Dog Super Jocks home game, here. Awesome. You can choose to be your favorite Super Jock. I don't want to be Steve Lundquist. I don't want to be Steve Lundquist either. Kids, nobody wants to be Steve Lundquist. Not even Steve Lundquist. That's why every game comes with an extra Mike Conley in his swimming attire. Wow, is that real spandex? It sure is, and it smells like him too. The rules are simple. Each player is dealt five cards from the yellow deck. Then the player sitting second closest to the yellow deck rolls three dice. Move the amount of spaces equal to the side of the red die facing away from you. If the total on your next roll is less than the age of your dog in human years times two, you've earned the right to draw two happenstance cards from the doggy deck. Move five spots if you draw a Willie Galt card, but if your other card is a Loch Ness boombox, it cancels your move and lets other players rub your dog's nose in it. It's that easy. Super Dog Super Jocks, the home game. Guaranteed to be a whole lot of doggone fun. Cards, dice, board sold separately. Dogs not included. On the next Cheap Seats, Steve. Welcome back to Cheap Seats and Super Dog Super Jocks. We've reached our last event, the Eliminator. Now, the Eliminator is a complex set of obstacles that the dogs and the jocks must navigate together. Like most marriages, only longer. The scores are so close right now that whoever wins this event will win it all. First up was Bill Johnson. Now, he and the dog basically s so they're out of contention. So we're going to jump to Steve Lundquist and Mud Puddles. Let's see if Lundquist can make it through this event without killing the poor dog. Well, Steve Lundquist is next now. He's got five more seconds. And we're back with more adult double there. Either Steve Lundquist or Bill Johnson will... Maybe, just maybe, if we're lucky, Lundquist will get dunked in some green slime. Now, if they can make through... <laughs> Wait, is that the dog? No, that's the cameraman. Or woman. <laughs> not gonna be too easy for mud puddles either. She's a big girl. And that's how Steve met his first wife. That's right. So Steve, for that matter, now it's a slide. Uh, they, you notice they're wearing their jackets and everything. Yeah, we noticed he was wearing a jacket. Yeah, wearing a jacket during a sporting event signifies that you're in over your head. Like when a pitcher unexpectedly gets a hit, he puts on a jacket. Or when a boxer gets knocked out, he puts on a jacket. Or when Phil Mickelson wins the Masters, he puts on a jacket. What's the, the follow the leader here, I think. Same thing. They were, Why did they adopt me and bring me to this? Yeah, that's it. When in doubt, just drag him, Steve. Or her in this case. Who are you, Bob Sarlacc? It's Sarlat. Whatever. 13 left, 13, 12, still a ways to go. They gotta make the hurdles and then... Thank you for flying, United. You can pick up your baggage at Terminal C. Puddle's taking a shortcut here, but Steve... Yep, they truly are super jocks. May I remind you that this man was an Olympic gold medalist? Yeah, at this point, I think you need to. To Mike Connolly. Right now, Steve Lundquist is with Bob Sarlat, who I think is making his way over to the runner-up. Olympic athlete. How do you feel? Your dog kind of... <laughs> Two. How you doing? Oh, man. How do you feel you did? I think Pud uh, did some off-road. Pud? On that one. You short okay, you Quist. I think I ran five times further than the dog did. You ran five times faster than the dog did? Further. The time was... Further. Thirty. Ooh, Ooh, didn't quite cut it, I don't think. Didn't, didn't beat the time. Well, there's still time to get out of this competition. They have a time of 123 to be. The Steve Lundquist school of bringing your dog to the line? Poacher, he's got his ball. That's his security ball. And keeping his mouth for this whole run. They are ready to go. They've had great teams. Where's this thing being held? A discovery zone? They'll take the whole ball away. Now, I heard that Conley promised that dog that he'd let him keep his nuts if he won. They're going to go after chicken. No wonder he's flying through the course. That's the way it's supposed to be done right there. Hey, Poacher. Let's hop into this time machine here so we can go back an hour and pretend this whole thing never happened. Poacher's beating Must keep my Down the slide, let's see what happens. Little Bow Wow. And there's Big Bow Wow. Oh, no problem for Mike. Look at that. That was too easy. They still got 50 seconds to burn here to win the thing. And Poacher's still leading. Jump it. 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 Wait, rewind it. 
dog cheated right there. Went around the hurdle. And Poacher, give it up! Wow, what a finish. I mean, I don't know about you, but I would put that up there with some of the greatest moments in sports history. Do you believe in miracles? Woof. This is your event, isn't it? Of course. Of course. <laughs> when it comes to running and triple jumping and just getting there quicker, Mike Conley looks to be the grand prize winner. Looks Nicely to be. They're just waiting for the results of the drug test from the dog. Might not be too great, but I'll tell you what. There's a rumor that Poacher used a catheter to insert Ruffian's urine into his bladder. Gold medal is a gold medal is a gold medal. True, but that's not a gold medal. It's gold-plated chocolate. Willie Gold. Da, 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 da. I don't know about you guys, but I'm dog tired. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's breathtaking display of athletic skill and versatility. We certainly did. So we must give credit where credit is due and hand out some cheapy awards. Okay, cheapy for least valuable parent goes to Bill Johnson. Don't let him touch that, don't! He's just a baby! And the cheapy for the biggest waterproof radio, the Loch Ness Boombox. You know, that truly was a fantastic finish to this competition, but I feel like it's hard to quantify just how great it was without seeing it in the context of other great moments in sports. So here it is alongside of some other pretty memorable moments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Cheap Seats. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be done right there. Throwing under pressure, throws his pass. Caught by Clark. Clark got a touchdown. Got through that in a big hurry. There comes Mike. Nice hurling technique there. Oh, it's it! They put a right field! Wave! There's a new record holder! They turn for home, and they turn for home as you might expect. As a team... Here's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Connolly and Poacher. Give it up! Welcome to Cheap Seats, I'm Randy, this is Jason, and today...